Jake Ludington here at Oracle Open World, and I'm here with Brenda Basista from HP, and we're going to show you some of the components that make up the Matrix system. Thanks, Jake. So we're talking about Blade System Matrix, and Blade System Matrix is really a solution that encompasses our C7000 enclosure with multiple blades and our storage solutions. If you're looking here, we have a C7000 enclosure with multiple blades. We have an EVA 4400, which is our storage area network solution. And along with this is our Virtual Connect solution. Um, with these components, along with the software components and the HP services that go along with it is what makes up Blade System Matrix. Okay, so we looked at the hardware that makes up the Blade System Matrix, and now you're gonna show me the, the matrix operating environment or the software that actually makes all the administration of a matrix system very easy. Yes. Yes, so we're gonna take a look at what makes up Blade System Matrix from a software perspective, and really the components within that is uh, referred to as our matrix operating environment. And we pull all of this together using the thought process of provisioning, optimize once it's up and running, and protecting. The idea of these templates is really to allow you to create a reference architecture of sorts that provisions our servers, the storage, and the networking components of the services being offered within your environment. And with this, we actually utilize a tool called our orchestration designer. And this is what it enables us to create these templates. So we, for every template that we create and every service that's deployed, we always have servers, storage, and networking. And that's what you see being created here. We've defined this particular template as be, having just one single server, the storage, and associated networking. So how, do all, how does all of this work? And the idea here is, is for each component within the environment, we assign um, a server, the configuration, uh, the number of processors, the amount of memory in the environment, what networks these servers will be attached to, as well as naming the servers, their host names, and how they will get their IP addresses. And the second piece that we configure here is really around the software. What OS and applications will be running on every server within this template? In this case, we'll choose Windows. I'm going to ask you to pause here just a second. So you've got um, so you've got server templating components here, and uh, you, I mean you're showing connecting up network components to uh, like the basically the operating system CPU stack and virtual hardware and or, or sorry virtual storage, and so that allows you to kind of like build a system on the fly within the context of the matrix. And then this templating system here, you would say have, have built like a ghost image or something of a Windows server or a Linux server that then gets pushed out to that configuration. Yes, that's correct. So the templates that you're looking here at here were pre-built and they are coming from several locations. You can see that they come as VMware templates. In this case, it's a Hyper-V template. We also support templates and images and scripted jobs from our rapid deployment pack software. And now we also support from HP software server automation. So let's move on. We've configured the server components. Let's take a look at the disk that's associated with that server. And the idea here is, is you could have multiple disks associated with the server. In this case, I will have one. It will be my bootable disk drive. And finally, the networking components. Now, this component actually plays in very closely to what we mentioned earlier with the hardware, with Virtual Connect. And the idea here is, is that we've already configured Virtual Connect. We've defined the networks in my environment and how those will be utilized with the environment. So that's the pre-provisioning piece. Now as I'm creating templates, I can see that I have already something called my Blade System Network um, available to me, and that was pulled in from Virtual Connect. So I'll go ahead and choose that. Um, you see that there's already configurations here for my DNS domain, my DNS servers, how many IP addresses are, are available, both DHCP and static. All of this was pre-configured within Virtual Connect, so that now I just choose what networks my servers will be attached to. And again, I'm showing a very, very simple, simple template 
with a single server, single disk drive, and a single network. This could be a mixed template that contains both virtual machines, physical servers, and those, all of these could be combined into one more complex, multi-tiered template that has both physical and virtual machines associated with it. So is this non-persistent storage where if, if I were to kill this machine, anything that I had stored on that would go away? And so, that, so is there also persistent storage? You can actually do both. Um, and that's your choice when you provision the template, whether it's persistent or non-persistent storage. It would be your choice on how you want to handle that. And, that's, and that would be the, what you've got here as physical storage and, and virtual storage, is that the difference? No, physical storage always, just always attaches to a physical server. Virtual storage is, in this case, if I'm using um, a VMware virtual machine, it would be my VMFS volume that I'm going to attach to, and that's where I create my virtual machine. But when I provision this virtual storage, I have the ability of choosing whether that storage is persistent or not. So the next step is really we've created the template, now we need to publish that template. And the idea behind publishing a template is making it available to my uh, line of business or my business units within the environment so that they can now come in and request these services. So I just published the template, very simple. Here's my template itself. So now let's go look at the provisioning piece. So here's my self-service portal. So as Jake, as a BU liaison, you would use this portal to request services from IT. And the idea here is this is my matrix template that we just created. So we can take a real quick look and we'll see that um, this is our very simple template down here. I have one virtual machine with the associated storage and networking. And now if you were requesting this, you would click on request service or create service and provide some basic information. How would you like your servers to be named once they're deployed? And you also have the ability to configure lease start times, which means if you don't need the service right now, you can request it that it start two weeks from now. So for QA testing, I need it in two weeks, and I'll need it for seven days to do my QA testing. And then I can release these resources and put them back into our resources pool to be reused for something else. And there is always an approval process that goes along with the request. So if we take a look, here's your request. You can see that it's paused, and it's paused for approval. IT always gets the ability to approve the request. So if we take a look at it, I'm now back in, and I'm an IT person. I can see that it's paused, and I will go ahead and approve it. Once I approve this request, the provisioning process starts. So the value of using the orchestration components for Blade System Matrix is I create these templates, I can use them over and over again, and you can see that once they're created, you request them, I approve them as an IT person, and there's really no human intervention required at that point. And kind of the point that I had made to Kevin earlier, this, look, this looks to me like a, it's a solution where you get like the IT engineering side of the equation focused on, on solving the, the real problems and, and not on the administration that, that largely should be automated anyway. Well, that's correct. So a lot of the things that they do for uh, creating a template is really architecture work. It's things that your IT architects are involved in. And typically for every service that's deployed in a customer environment, they do that over and over and over again. The idea here is, is that they do that once with the server guys, the storage guys, and the networking guys. They come up with a set of what I would call reference architectures or maybe best practices for their environment for individual services that they would typically offer. They create those. Everybody approves them as a template. And now you get to request them, and as IT, they're not in a meeting room over and over and over again every time there's a service that needs to be deployed.